Hello again, we are going to talk here about infections of the male reproductive system. So this commonly gets overlooked because um, we often think when we're talking about the reproductive system, we think of the female reproductive system, and certainly that's going to be more tested. Um, you know, things like pelvic inflammatory disease and stuff like that is certainly more tested, more common. Um, but uh, it is important to consider some of these uh, infections because um, they do come up and um, in the clinic, it's going to be important to know this. We don't want to neglect half the population, right? So if you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And certainly feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will get updates and notifications as I put more and more videos up. Okay, so there are really only four things we're going to be talking about. Acute prostatitis, acute epididymitis, orchitis, and balanitis. This is the male reproductive system, uh, fairly straightforward, uh, but it is important to be familiar with this anatomy. I am not going to be teaching you anatomy here. All right, prostatitis. So acute prostatitis is a painful inflammation within the prostate, and it's usually accompanied by evidence of a recent or ongoing bacterial infection, which can result in sepsis. Now, the hallmark of prostatitis is lower urinary tract symptoms in a male. So we're talking UTI-like symptoms, frequency, urgency, and stuff like that, pain on urination. The most common uh, cause is E. coli, and um, that's important to bear in mind because of the possible exposures to enteric bacteria, i.e. anal sex, um, catheterization, and so forth. The symptoms, they can have symptoms of sepsis. However, that's a little less common. Often this presents with UTI-like symptoms, a diminished urinary stream. Remember the prostate kind of, uh, well, I don't know what the best word is, but uh, the urethra runs through it. Okay, so it kind of holds the urethra, but the urethra runs right through it. So if that gets inflamed or enlarged, um, then that can cause uh, difficulty with starting or um, keeping a strong uh, urine stream. And then, of course, they can have a tender prostate. However, it is not recommended to do um, a prostate exam if you suspect acute prostatitis because you can um, cause bacteremia and even sepsis from doing that. The best initial test is going to be a urinalysis with culture. We also want to do urine microscopy. If the patient does have signs of sepsis, you should get blood cultures and start antibiotics. The treatment here is an antibiotic. We generally go with the fluoroquinolones, and so ciprofloxacin would be the best uh, to start out with. Uh, you can give this orally if there's no sepsis or fever. Uh, however, if they do have fever or signs of sepsis, you want to give this IV. Epididymitis. Uh, this is inflammation and swelling of the epididymis, which kind of sits uh, posterior to the uh, testes. So you can see it's right here. And um, this, the cause is typically going to be the, uh, the venereal bacteria. So chlamydia, trachomatis, Neisseria gonorrhea, or less commonly, mycoplasma genitalium. So these are, these are all things that you want to look for. Now, these are the most common causes uh, among sexually active men. Uh, however, if you're dealing with an older man or someone who engages in anal intercourse, uh, and that would be insertive anal intercourse, uh, then you would want to check uh, or consider enteric pathogens. Now, the symptoms here are a gradual onset of unilateral testicular pain. Now, what is the other thing we want to think of with testicular pain, with severe testicular pain? We want to think of testicular torsion. Now, how is this different? Well, with testicular torsion, it comes on suddenly. This is a sudden pain, whereas acute epididymitis, it comes on over the course of days. Uh, also, another thing that we're going to see is prensine. What prensine is, is that when you elevate the affected testicle, um, you get a mild reduction in pain. Whereas with epididymitis, or sorry, with uh, testicular torsion, you don't get uh, that, uh, but what you may see is an elevated testicle. The best initial test when suspecting epididymitis is a urinalysis with culture, including microscopy. So microscopy, you may actually be able to visualize 
the organism. If you don't visualize any organism, then you really need to think of chlamydia trachomatis. Now, if chlamydia or gonorrhea is suspected, then you're going to go with ceftriaxone and doxycycline together. If the patient engages in anal intercourse, instead of doxycycline, you give levofloxacin, which is more... Um, has better activity against those enteric organisms. And if the patient has mycoplasma genitalium, uh, which you may see on microscopy, then you wanna go with moxifloxacin. And that's actually the best drug, even within that family of drugs, the, the uh, fluoroquinolones. Okay, so orchitis is usually a complication of epididymitis. You can think of it kind of like an ascending infection. Mumps is a big cause of orchitis, uh, but that's quite less common. But it is something you should think of in an unvaccinated child who also has, you know, sort of that gopher cheek appearance with parotitis. This is a clinical diagnosis, but you do want to work them up for acute epididymitis because this tends to happen um, in conjunction with each other. So we call that epididymal orchitis. So they may have all of those features of epididymitis. However, when it does get to the testicles, it will hurt even worse. So they may have an acute worsening. The treatment here, if it is a bacterial cause, you will treat this just like epididymitis. If there's no bacterial cause, then it's just supportive, and that's rest, ice, and elevation. Um, you can do that for anyone, though. That helps with the symptoms. Balanitis is an inflammation of the glands of the penis, which is colloquially referred to as the head. Balanoobstetitis is an inflammation of both the glands and the foreskin. And so naturally uncircumcised men are going to be at a higher risk for balanoobstetitis. Um, it only occurs in uncircumcised men. And as a matter of fact, it occurs in one in 17 uncircumcised men. So that's like six or 7%, so not negligible. Circumcision is protective against balanoobstetitis, actually eliminates your risk. It's also uh, protective against lichen sclerosis, urinary tract infections, sexually transmitted infections, and penile cancer. So um, circumcision, while controversial, does have benefits. The cause when it's infectious is usually candida albicans, so fungal. However, some of the venereal diseases may be suspected in men, and it could also be bacterial overgrowth. This is something to think of in young children, um, and the reason is because they often don't have very good hygiene. If you are uncircumcised, it is a little bit more upkeep. Non-infectious causes include chemical irritants and allergy, um, and so that's something to possibly look into. Symptoms, uh, it's fairly straightforward. There will be redness of the penile head or of the foreskin. Uh, it's painful, it swells. Look for a history of poor penile hygiene, possibly somebody lower socioeconomic status. And then an inability to retract the force, foreskin is common, and this just makes me cringe thinking about it. Uh, but do not try to forcibly retract the foreskin. You will cause paraphimosis, which is much, much, much more severe, and often those patients will go on to need a circumcision. The treatment is based on the underlying cause. If it is candidal, um, which you can see on microscopy um, with the KOH prep, uh, what you want to do then is provide ketoconazole, which is topical, and you want to consider an immunodeficiency. So one of the uh, common ways that this can happen, and it's not an immunodeficiency per se, but through diabetes, if you are peeing out sugar, that is going to raise your risk of a fungal infection. I mean, just think of all the, the conditions that lead to fungal infections. Dark, damp, and then sugary, certainly. So dark and damp, I mean, that's the genitals in general. That's why women are such at high risk for, uh, for vaginal candidiasis. This is kind of the fungal infection of the male reproductive system. So you can think of it in a similar way. If there's bacterial overgrowth, so if you're dealing with a child with balanitis, then you can give mu mupirocin, and that's a topical antibiotic. And then this is just a recap of everything we talked about. Uh, so uh, this is, this is going to be fairly important for you to internalize.